When people are searching for curriculum for their kids, the one type of curriculum that seems to be the hardest to decide on is math. Finding math curriculum can sometimes feel like the worst word problem ever. I don't know what it is about math. I don't know if we all feel slightly inadequate to teach math, if we can barely remember elementary math concepts, or if we're just really intimidated by all the different philosophies and methods and opinions about math. Who knew people could be so opinionated about math? It's such a divisive topic, and it's really hard to navigate what you should choose for your kid. So today, I wanna to talk to you about finding math curriculum. To do this, we're gonna cover some of these methods and philosophies and terms that you are thrown around about math curriculum and hopefully help make it easier for you to find something that works for your family. This is going to be a two-part episode, so please make sure to like and subscribe so you can see part two, where I review a bunch of common math curriculums, the ones we've used and the ones we've loved and not loved as much. Turning on notifications helps us to continue to create free content for you. So the first thing I wanna talk about is Common Core versus traditional. Now, Common Core math is a phrase that you hear thrown around a lot. But actually, Common Core is a set of standards, not a math method. It's not an educational method. But what we talk about when we talk about Common Core math is we're talking about the type of education for math that is done in schools now that really became widely implemented upon the adoption of the Common Core standards. Now, this type of math education focuses on teaching students to think mathematically. It kind of has a narrow range but goes very deeply into topics. When I talk about traditional math education, I'm talking about what you and I grew up with really all the way back into the 50s and 60s. It covered a wide range of topics but only covered them very shallowly. It often used algorithms to teach students to do math quickly. Now, both of these ideas have a lot of merit. The common core, I'm gonna call it common core math, the common core math that's taught in schools isn't always taught very well. I think a lot of us adults don't fully understand how to teach it because that is not how we were educated. I don't think it's all bad, but a lot of times it's not done very well in schools. And traditional math, while it's really important to be able to solve problems quickly and easily, a lot of times we don't understand why we multiply that way or why we divide that way or why you solve an equation that way. And so it really makes it difficult to transfer it into other ideas. Those of us that have trouble with word problems, it's probably because we did a more traditional style of math education. So both of these ideas have a lot of merit. Now don't be turned off if you see that a math curriculum says common core aligned. Really any curriculum can be common core aligned. It can even be a traditional math curriculum like Saxon math can say common core aligned without actually having changed any to meet those standards. There is a set of standards. It's kind of like when you go to the grocery store and you see rice and it says it's a gluten-free food. Of course it's a gluten-free food, it's rice. Rice doesn't have wheat gluten in it, but they pop that gluten-free label on the rice to make you wanna buy the rice, whereas the rice was gluten-free all along. So my personal preference is to find math curriculums that combine both of these. I really want my kids to understand how to solve problems quickly. Sometimes your kid just needs to know what six times seven is and they need to know it quickly, how to find a percentage quickly or how to divide a number quickly. But at the same time, I want them to understand how math works and I want them to be able to apply that to their lives and I want them to be equipped to do careers in math and sciences and to be able to do that well and intuitively. So I really look for curriculums that combine both of these or I'll even combine curriculums that use a little bit of both so that they have some of each. Number two, hands-on or textbook heavy. Now these are pretty self-explanatory, hands-on curriculums. You're gonna have lots of manipulatives, textbook heavy. All you need are the textbooks. 
What's not quite as obvious is that these labels imply something about the method being used. Something that uses a lot of manipulatives is more likely to be a new math curriculum, something that's more common core, whereas a textbook heavy curriculum is gonna be more traditional, generally speaking. So you can make some guesses about what type of curriculum it is based on seeing those key terms used. Deciding which one of those is best for your kids, it's really gonna depend on the learning style of your kids. All of my boys are pretty intuitive when it comes to math. I never felt like we needed hands-on stuff. They really did much better with visual ideas than physical manipulatives. And if we needed manipulatives, I'd just go grab some Legos or chocolate chips or race cars or something, and we would use that. But generally speaking, that wasn't something we needed, but there are some great curriculums that use manipulatives. Things like The Good and the Beautiful and Matthew C. use manipulatives for kids that are very tactile, that can be a lot of fun and really engaging for them. Programs like Saxon, Abeka, Teaching Textbooks, those are going to be your textbook heavy curriculums. Spiral or mastery, what does that mean? With a spiral curriculum, it's going to be something that is more traditional generally. It's more of what you grew up with. You cover multiplication one day and the next day you cover it again, along with addition review and times and maybe a little bit of clock reading and money. And then the next day you do the same thing, but it's slightly more in depth. And then again, the next day, and then maybe you take a couple days break and then you circle back around. And with a spiral program, you keep circling back around to the content, going deeper and deeper with each pass through. The great thing about a spiral program is that it keeps reviewing, it keeps reviewing, it really helps solidify it in your kid's mind. They're not going to forget it. And it does really help a student master the concepts, even though it's called spiral, it does help with that mastery to have it spiral through a lot. Now, the other one is mastery. With mastery, you take one concept and instead of reviewing other concepts at the same time, you follow that one path of mastery and you start off very easy with that concept and you go very deep with that one concept before you move on. So maybe you start with fractions and you start with what is a fraction? What is half? What is fourth? And by the end, you're multiplying fractions or dividing fractions all over the course of a month. And they take that one idea and they move it deeply. And the great thing about that is you are developing that more mathematical thinking in that process. So which way is better? There's no easy answer for that. You are going to have to answer that for your kid. My kid who is dyslexic really needs lots and lots of review in order for him to remember topics. If we go away from anything for too long, it like flies out of his brain. And so even though his math curriculum is a mastery curriculum, I go back and turn it into a spiral curriculum myself so that he can review those concepts. But I have other kids who find it very frustrating to leave a concept before they have gone deep into that concept. And for those kids, a mastery approach really works better. This is going to have to be you figuring out how your kid's brain works, and you might have to do some detective work and see what is going to work best for them. Saxon, Abeka, Bob Jones, teaching textbooks, those are all going to be spiral. Generally speaking, most of your traditional textbook heavy programs are going to be spiral. Matthew C, Khan Academy, Beast Academy, those are all mastery approaches. Next, online or textbook. Math really lends itself well to online learning and there are lots of excellent online math curriculums. In fact, we have really preferred doing an online math curriculum for some time for several reasons. Two of my kids have writing disorders, so physically working through textbooks can be very frustrating for them, even though they're gifted in math. So moving to an online program was an accommodation that I made to help them excel in the areas they were gifted in and kind of remediate the areas they were struggling with. So that's been great. There are really positives and negatives to both. And again, it really depends on your kid. Is your kid gonna do better with an online program that is checking their work 
Or are they going to do better with you sitting next to them, working together, physically writing it out? Are they a more tactile learner and they need those physical manipulatives? They might do better with a textbook approach. And a lot of the online programs also offer a textbook version. Khan Academy, CTC Math, and Prodigy are all online programs. Beast Academy and Teaching Textbooks offer both online and physical textbooks. Saxon, Abeka, Bob Jones, Horizon, those are going to be textbook only approaches. Online programs also tend to be a little bit more expensive than your textbook approaches. So if budget is an issue that might play into it. However, Khan Academy is a completely free program. So there are online options available even if you are needing free math curriculum. Adding to the difficulty in deciding which math curriculum to use, each of these programs tends to follow their own scope and sequence. A scope and sequence is the list of topics that a curriculum covers in any year. Some of these programs are advanced, like Horizon and Beast Academy are ahead. Beast Academy follows their own timeline completely. Some tend to be a little bit behind the norm, like teaching textbooks, which can make it really difficult if you decide one program isn't working and you want to switch over to another. You may find that half the things covered in that book you've never seen before and half your kid covered two years ago. So that can also add to the confusion and make it a little frustrating. With so many variables, <laughs> How can you decide what is the right program for your kid? Is there any way to find the perfect curriculum? I want to ease your mind and let you know that there are many, many excellent programs out there. I feel like Donald Trump. Excellent, fantastic. As you are choosing math curriculum, you aren't choosing between the good options and the bad options. You're really choosing between many good options. There is no one perfect curriculum, but you're probably not gonna choose a bad one. As you're looking at them, sort through and try to figure out what might work best for your kid, but don't stress about it too much because pretty much anything you're gonna use is going to be good. There's lots of good programs. The best way to find the program that might work best for you is to think about your own child and their learning needs. But before I go, I want to recommend one amazing resource to you, and that is Kathy Duffy Reviews. Kathy Duffy Reviews is a website where Kathy Duffy reviews homeschool curriculum, and she has pretty much everything on there. It is very rare that I try to look up a curriculum that she has not reviewed. And she will explain where different curriculums fall on the spectrum of math. I really recommend it. Before I buy anything, I always check her site. So if you have a curriculum that I haven't mentioned here and you want to see where it fits, please go to her site and check it out. I'll post the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that I helped you navigate math curriculums a little bit and sort through some of all this different terminology. Please make sure you've subscribed so you can see part two. Happy homeschooling.